This is a block of DIY ballistics gelatin that we made ourselves. Today on this video, we're gonna show you how to make it at home, and then we're gonna put it to the test with some uh, of our DIY weapons and some guns. <laughs> To make your ballistic gel, very simple. This is the most cost-effective gelatin we could find, and we measure this by weight. So that's why we're gonna need our kitchen scale. Beyond that, your water's gonna need to be really hot, so you gotta have a way to heat that up. You want some way to keep your gelatin from sticking to your mold, so that's why we've got that spray. And you'll need to mix it. This is just a little paint stir on the end of our drill. You could use <laughs> Something like this, but it's gonna be way more difficult, so I would go with the drill if you have one. Especially if you're mixing a large quantity, you need a powered mixer. Uh, which we are. Yeah. As far as your molds, that's entirely up to you. We are going to do one out of this container, which is about a foot by foot square by about 15 inches long, as well as we're going to do a mold out of Jerem's head. You probably recognize this from a previous video. I love that thing. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> the recipe is one part gelatin to eight parts water, but we can't give you the exact amounts of each to put in because it's gonna depend on the size of the container you're using. So you're gonna wanna take the container you're using and throw it on a scale and start adding water until it's roughly the height you want, making sure to leave a little bit because you're gonna add some more gelatin. This is about how high we want our finished block of ballistic gelatin to be. Actually, we'd want it a little bit higher, but remember we're adding the gelatin on top of the water, so we'll leave the water level a little bit lower. How many pounds is that? 28 pounds. So we just need three and a half pounds of gelatin mixed into 28 pounds of water. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is put all the water in a pot and start heating it up. The water needs to be as hot as possible, probably just under boiling temperature, because um, you want the gelatin to dissolve in the water, and to do that, it needs to be very hot. So heat your water. We do want to be mixing as we pour in to keep it from clumping too much. Yes, we do. Here we go. So I'm just gonna slowly... As usual, gelatin smells delicious. That is sarcasm. I'm glad that's in your face and not mine. What you want to do is cook the gelatin until it's clear. And it's impossible to see right now because of all these bubbles. So I'm going to scrape off the foam and just dump it into a bucket. You're gonna make our bucket stink. Yep, I'm gonna throw this bucket away after this. Obviously you want to keep stirring it so it doesn't burn. Um, and don't stir it too vigorously after your initial stirring because uh, you don't want to introduce more foam than necessary into it. Okay, so you can see the mixture is actually pretty clear. Very clear. Just for fun, we have no idea if this is gonna work or not. We're gonna try also making some with regular Jello mix instead of gelatin. Not that we'll be eating this, because these are not food safe pots right now. Yeah, we're not sure. They were here. <laughs> they were with the T-Core stuff, so there's no telling what on earth was last used in them. And I mean, no telling. No telling. Well, that really changed the color. Yeah, now it's purple. Now it's black. That's really cool. Probably already hot enough, too. Yeah, and that's so much, like, I don't see any clumps yeah. in there at all. That's The fantastic. mistake a lot of people make is not getting your water hot enough before you pour the gelatin in, because then the gelatin, like, starts, like, clumping up, and it does something weird when it's poured in cold. So do yourself a favor, pour it in hot water, now, because we're using plastic molds, ideally you would use a heat-proof mold, something made out of metal. We don't have that, so we're using plastic, but that means we probably should let this cool down quite a bit before pouring it into the mold, just so the mold doesn't melt. 75 years later. So we came up with kind of a crack-brained idea. Now, we were a little worried about the container deforming because of the heat. So we went ahead and put some water in one of them, and we've stuck the other one down in here, so when we pour the gelatin, there will be an insulating layer between these two containers. And hopefully, even if this top one wants to deform, the bottom one will keep its shape. Now this one is still, say 120, 125. Nice gentle pour, we don't want too many splashes. Looks like we're gonna have to scrape more foam off the top. It still feels cold on the outside. Ah, that'll work fine. That's gonna be great. In the fridge it goes. We'll check back in on that when. About 24 hours. 24 hours later. By the way, guys, uh, this foam, it looks like nice fun little soap bubbles. Uh, it is not. It is gelatin foam, which means it hardens and cures, and it becomes all sorts of fun. So if you uh, put, get you know foam all over your nice 
cookware that you like to use, please wash it off immediately. Don't let it harden up. Don't ask how I know. Jake, how do you know? Shut up! So we're gonna cast Jerem's head in ballistic gelatin, but I was thinking it'd be really cool if we could do an approximation of his skull inside the head. So I've got here a coconut, and we just need to figure out a way to suspend it somewhere in the middle while the gelatin hardens. So our thought was we would take this paint stir, screw it to the coconut, shove it down the neck hole, and then screw it to the mold, the mold. itself. And hopefully that would keep it right where we wanted it. <laughs> and if you guys want to know how to make a cast of your head like we have done to Jerem's head here, check out the link in the video below. I'm gonna spray it with our non-stick stuff. That just feels weird to spray my head with <laughs> ears. Probably enough. Ah. <laughs> hey, stop <laughs> it! Oh no, the coconut is trying to float. Is it seriously? It really is. It is very dense liquid, so yeah. Wow. Ooh, did okay. You, did you feel that too much? No. Yeah, it's a bit high. I, I could go another eighth of an inch. So wait, is the, how is the coconut trying to float? It is up? trying to float. All right. <laughs> Let's hope. We shall see you tomorrow. <laughs> We're out here at the range. Let's jump into it. So we've got some of our cool past projects here. We've got our blow gun, we've got our sling belt, and then our compressed air blow gun, and we're gonna see what these will do to my head. Let's go down to the Okay, you ready? Ready. Here we go. It bounced right off. <laughs> it just bounced right off. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened. I shot myself right in the eye. That looks uncomfortable. Right There's a line place. here. Was this here before? Okay, here we go. Second shot, smaller nail. <laughs> Same, Same thing. thing. Just, I didn't expect it to penetrate. Yeah, oh, barely. Uh, looks like we have a new mark right over here. A comment on our last blowgun video said that they wanted to see what happens if you shot the darts at ballistic gel, and we so happen to have ballistic gel. So let's give this a try with the uh, heavy nail dart. Okay, that was better. Well, it penetrated all the way to the home. Okay, we got our homemade darts. Let's see how it goes. Ew. There you go. That looks... That's just, that's disturbing. Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, that's recording. All right, giant blowgun dart in the air gun. Three, two, one. Uh, oh, that's terrifying. Oh my god. That's completely inside. That is... That's normally. I mean, I knew this thing was powerful, but... <laughs> that's, oof, That wow. sunk, that went right inside. It's still did not penetrate the coconut. I bet it bounced off it because it's right next to it. Coconuts are hard. Yeah, they are. Okay, we're gonna start out small with a uh, Glock 19 nine millimeter. Put that right in the center, see what that does. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, much, much more energy delivered. We're gonna try a shotgun slug. This might knock it right off the table. Did that go through? <laughs> I think that went all the way through. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Boom, we're gonna fire a slug into it. <laughs> that exploded. That was amazing. I think there's enough of the head left, though, that we could shoot it with the rifle a few uh, times. I see pieces of coconut on the table. That is <laughs> terrifying. Yes? I think it's dead. Uh, yeah, I think so. Did yep. you want some souvenirs? Oh my gosh. No, I'm good. I'm okay. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> oh, it's falling apart here too. Wow, that okay. was awesome. Oh, that's where the slug went in. Yeah. No way. Wow, that's awesome. That's really cool. Thanks. This is the jello we casted. It didn't even end up being. It's basically just jello. It's a little thick for jello. I'm gonna shoot this with birdshot and it's just gonna explode. This is gonna be a mess in 
Three, two, one. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so, you definitely cannot make ballistic gelatin out of jello. Just don't try. Well, hopefully, you had as much fun as we did today. That's how you make DIY ballistic gelatin. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.